If humans vanished tomorrow and evolution hit the reset button, who'd step up next? The chimpanzee or the bonobo? They're our closest relatives, sharing about 98.7% of our DNA. But what they do with that DNA couldn't be more different. One lives in a world of dominance, strategy, and survival, where strength decides everything. The other runs on empathy, cooperation, and, well, a lot of affection. Same genus, two totally different blueprints for being alive. Chimpanzees are the problem solvers, the tool makers, the schemers. They'll work together to hunt, form alliances, even stage raids on rival groups. Bonobos, on the other hand, settle their problems through peace, or through behaviors that would make YouTube demonetize this video in seconds. And that's what makes this such an interesting question, because if both species are so close to human, which one would actually become human again if given the chance? And whichever one you pick says a lot about what you think makes us, us. Intelligence isn't just about what you can build, it's about how you think. And chimpanzees and bonobos think in completely different ways. Chimps live in tough environments, surrounded by competition. Every meal is a challenge, every day is a test of problem solving. They've been seen stripping branches to make spears, sharpening them with their teeth and stabbing bush babies hiding in tree holes. They'll stack rocks to reach fruit, use sticks to fish termites out of mounds, and even modify their tools depending on the task. Now that's not random. That's planning, foresight, and an understanding of cause and effect. They also communicate surprisingly well. Chimps can read each other's gestures, tones, and facial expressions with precision. They use more than 60 distinct signals, everything from subtle grunts that mean food here to a pantoot that can rally an entire hunting party. Some researchers even describe their teamwork as a primitive form of language. Now, bonobos, on the other hand, don't face the same daily struggle. They live in the Congo Basin, a region with lush forests and food in abundance. So instead of evolving the cunning of hunters, they evolved the intuition of diplomats. Bonobos excel at emotional intelligence. They pick up on tension before it explodes. They comfort the anxious. They reconcile after conflict. When researchers tested their problem solving, bonobos often chose cooperation over competition, even when it cost them a reward. Now that's rare in the animal world. So while chimps use tools to dominate nature, bonobos use understanding to navigate society. If chimps evolved into humans again, they'd probably rediscover fire, metallurgy, and warfare before anything else. Their curiosity is tied to control, how to shape the world, how to win. A bonobo version of humanity might skip the conquest entirely. Their cities might be greener, quieter, maybe even kinder, but slower to develop. You'd see fewer skyscrapers and more communities built around harmony and emotional health. But intelligence alone doesn't build civilizations. What really defines a species is how it handles power. Among chimpanzees, power is everything. Their societies are built on dominance, strategy, and alliances. Basically, jungle politics. Males constantly compete for rank, and the top chimp earns his spot through a mix of strength, confidence, and social manipulation. It's not always the biggest who wins. It's the one who can read the room, form alliances, and know exactly when to show force and when to back off. Chimp hierarchies can be brutal. They wage raids on neighboring groups. They patrol borders. They even commit acts that look disturbingly like organized warfare. It's survival through control. And in a strange way, it mirrors how early humans climbed to the top, through cooperation and conflict in equal measure. Bonobos live by an entirely different rulebook. Their societies are female-led, built around trust and bonding rather than fear. Aggression is rare, and when tension does rise, they don't fight, they de-escalate, often through affection or group comfort. Researchers call it peace through pleasure, and honestly, it works. Their communities are calmer, more stable, and there's far less infighting for status. What's fascinating is that both systems work. The chimp model drives innovation and survival through competition. The bonobo model sustains peace and emotional stability through empathy. If chimps became human-like, their societies might evolve into power-driven civilizations. Ambitious, organized, maybe a bit ruthless. 
Bonobo societies, on the other hand, might resemble extended families, slower to expand, but far more cohesive. Less empire, more community. In a world shaped by bonobo instincts, politics might look more like therapy than strategy. But in a world ruled by chimp logic, progress might be fast and bloody. And what really separates the two species isn't just how they handle power, it's how they feel it. Chimpanzees experience emotion almost like we do, but theirs burns closer to the surface. They grieve when a family member dies. They embrace friends after conflict. They play, they laugh, they mourn but everything is tied to their social rank. A hug might mean comfort, but it might also mean alliance. When a dominant male is overthrown, he doesn't just lose status, he loses identity. Some have even fallen into depression-like states afterward, sitting quietly, refusing to eat. There's a weight to emotion in chimp societies, powerful, raw, but tangled in hierarchy. They understand loyalty and betrayal the way we do, a chimp can remember who helped him years ago and who didn't. They reconcile but never truly forget. It's empathy mixed with calculation, compassion balanced by self-interest. That blend might sound familiar because it's basically the emotional recipe of modern humanity. Bonobos, though, feel emotions differently. Their social bonds are more fluid, less about dominance, more about trust and reassurance. You can see it in their body language. The soft eye contact, gentle gestures, and constant physical closeness. They see contact not only when stressed, but as a daily rhythm of life. It's their emotional glue. When one bonobo gets scared, others come running. Not to assert control, but to soothe. They'll share food without hesitation, cradle each other in grief, and even help outsiders or orphans, which is rare in the animal world. They show a kind of empathy that goes beyond survival. Empathy for its own sake. And that's where the difference becomes profound. Chimps use emotion as a tool, a way to build strategy, maintain rank, or strengthen alliances. Bonobos use emotion as a language, the foundation of their entire society. If chimps evolved into human-like beings, emotions would still be intertwined with ambition, competition, and pride, the driving forces of progress, but also of conflict. Bonobos would evolve into something quieter but perhaps more emotionally complete, a civilization built not on conquest, but on understanding. Their version of humanity might not conquer planets, but it might conquer loneliness. They'd value connection over achievement, presence over power. Of course, emotion and intelligence only matter if a species can survive long enough to use them. And when it comes to drive, that raw, unstoppable push to adapt, chimpanzees are wired for it. They live in harsher, more competitive environments than bonobos. Food is harder to find, predators are more common, and neighboring groups are dangerous. That pressure forged them into strategists, resilient, adaptable, and willing to take risks. Chimps don't just react to their environment, they shape it. They'll expand territory, raid for resources, and adapt to whatever the jungle throws at them. That relentless survival instinct feels like the same spark that drove early humans to leave Africa, to experiment, to conquer cold climates and new lands. Bonobos never faced that same evolutionary fire. Their habitat in the Congo Basin is lush, full of fruit and shelter, and largely isolated from major predators. Without that constant struggle, they evolved toward cooperation, not conquest. It's not that they're lazy, they just don't need to fight. In evolutionary terms, stress builds steel, and bonobos never had to harden in the same way. So who really wins? The species that conquers its world, or the one that learns to live within it? Chimps might get there first, but bonobos might be the ones who stay. Maybe that's the real irony. Both species already carry a piece of what it means to be human. Chimpanzees remind us of our drive, the part that builds, explores, and never accepts limits. They're proof that ambition isn't just a human thing, it's an animal instinct, born from hunger and struggle. Without that kind of fire, our ancestors probably wouldn't have stood upright, left Africa, or survived the Ice Ages. But that same fire also forged our wars, our greed, our need to dominate. Chimps mirror the human mind at its most brilliant and its most dangerous. Bonobos show the other side, the one that rarely makes headlines. 
They teach that survival doesn't always mean conquest. Sometimes it means knowing when to stop fighting. They live with a calm intelligence we've mostly lost, a sense that connection might matter more than competition. If chimps represent the spark that made us powerful, bonobos represent the wisdom we keep trying to learn. It's tempting to crown one as the better human, but maybe that's the wrong question. Chimps and bonobos aren't opposites. They're reflections of two halves of the same story. One is chaos, one is calm. One climbs higher, the other stays grounded. Humanity, in a way, is what happens when those two forces collide and somehow coexist in the same brain. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.